Welcome to another edition of your On Air series for the Effective Living Series 2023. My name is Bernard Avle. This week we're focusing on emotional and mental health imperatives for the year 2023 and our focus for today is managing your mental health. My guest is the Head of Department for Psychiatry at the University of Ghana Medical School here at Kolebu, Dr. Delali Fiabedok. Welcome to the show. It's good to see you. I know apart from managing the uh, department as head, you also do a few things. Uh, can you tell me a bit about what else you do? Uh, I run a private practice okay. at Samus Medical Center. Okay. And then I also like to play the piano. Oh, so you're a musician? <laughs> yes. I see. So you run a private practice, you, you play the piano as well. And of course, congratulations, you're a fellow of the Ghana yes, College I'm of Physicians and Surgeons. Ghana Surgeons. What does that mean? It means that you can wear a big hat. Or <laughs> yes, you can wear a big hat. It gives you the liberty to teach students. You can teach um, other doctors who want to specialize in your field. Mm. And then other specialists who want to go ahead to become fellows, so you mm. can also teach them. And then it gives you an opportunity to handle mm. you know, other administrative positions within the college. I see. When I was growing up, there was only one mental health doctor I knew, Dr. Asari. And for a long time, he was the only person. Then I think Dr. Uh, Akwesi also took over. It sure. wasn't a very popular field. How did you? get into that field? Well, I've had a passion since my early days in medical school. Um, I was intrigued by the fact that people who had mental disorders had solutions. There were solutions available to them and that, you know, blew my mind. Mm -hmm. So I decided to explore it more. Um, you know, from the Christian background, you know what it means when people have mental illness, we spiritualize it and all that. So I found a way around it, and then my passion just picked, and I went into it. Wow. And I'm encouraging more people to join. Amazing. <laughs> so what do we mean by mental health? Yeah, so mental health is basically how you think, how you process information, how you interpret signals around you in a way that allows you to adapt to the situation in which you are. Um, and I, most people have taken mental health for granted, but it is something that is real, it's existential. Everybody has it, children mm. have it. Mm. It spans the whole life cycle. Mm. So children, in fact, in, in, in kids, there's something we call fetal distress. So that is before the child even comes to the world, they start having mental health issues. <laughs> <laughs> fetal distress. Fetal distress. Wow. And this says to me, that means two. So two mm. times of stress. Wow. Whilst you are your mother's womb. Double stress. I tell you. <laughs> so, wow. So it, and then children have it when you, are, when you are born, adolescents have it when you are transitioning from childhood to, you know, adulthood. And mm. even the transition from adolescents to ch and adulthood also, it's, it's, it's fraught with a lot of mental health issues. So it's, mm. it's everywhere. It, elderly people have dementia and all that. So mental health is something that is with us, but mm. uh, we use the ostrich approach as if it does not exist. We, we pretend it, it doesn't exist, exist and because, we don't talk about it. Yeah. But why is mental health important for effective living? Um, I like to borrow a scripture from the, the mm. Bible mm. that says that um, I wish above all things that you, you prosper and be in good health, even mm -hmm. as your soul prospered. Mm -hmm. You know, so the soul there is basically your mental health. Okay. So it means that even if you prosper without a good soul or even without a prosperity in your soul, then become deficient you may not be able to enjoy. That's why it's critical for every individual who wants to be blossom in your, your lifestyle to take your mental health seriously because your success is hinged on that. Mm. You know, as the Bible uh, categorically stated it. Mm. We've seen people who are rich, you know, they didn't take their mental health seriously and they came crumbling down. Mm. And quite a number of people. So it's, it's critical to this effective um, living for every individual. Wow. So mental health is a broad area. What are the components of mental health? Um, we call it the, the, the trinity of mental health. Okay. So the first one are the, is the biological component. So um, that has got to do with, you know, your upbringing, your genetics, mm -hmm. the neurotransmitters that you have in your brain. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not by anybody's fault that you, you come into this world with little dopamine and for that reason, you might go depressed or something, but it does exist. The other component is the psychological component. So mm -hmm. that's about your behavior, um, your attitude, your coping skills, coping mechanisms, um, your hobbies and all that. It, it forms a, a colossal amount of what your mental health is. Mm -hmm. The other part is the social. So how you're able to interact with people, your friends, your family, 
or political affiliations, all those things form part of you. Mm. you know? So these are key components of your wow. mental health. And as those in the field, that's what we use in managing patients. There's a component in the history taking. If, let's say, I have a patient, we call the premorbid personality. Mm -hmm. Now, what does this involve? It just involves me finding out what the patient's lifestyle was before they had the condition. And it gives me an inkling into the, the deficits that he has that contributed to the condition that they're having and then their strengths. So I can home in on their strengths and move them into treatments. Um, and then if they are family issue, we use that as a way of resolving the problems that they have. So it, it's a huge component of you know, uh, mm. effective living. So there's your biological, there's the psychological, and the social. And you use a word by dopamine, which means that you could have certain hormonal issues just purely because of who gave birth to you. Exactly. And that if not properly managed, can have a deleterious effect on your mental health. Exactly, exactly. So, um, but we, we, it's like a Venn diagram. So you have these three components all interacting together. Mm -hmm. So you could have a genetic predispos predisposition, but mm -hmm. if your environment is cool, that gene will never get expressed, okay? So, and you can also have, you know, very bad um, psychosocial environment, even if you have a genetic uh, problem, you never manifest. Mm -hmm. So it goes in both ways. Um, so the three, so you investigate for all three? Exactly, we investigate for all three, the mm. biological, the, 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 the biological intrigues me. You use the word dopamine, what is dopamine? Um, dopamine is one of the million <laughs> um, neurotransmitters in the brain. Mm. It's actually responsible for our sensation of pleasure. Mm -hmm. So if you take alcohol, if you smoke, um, if you have sex, mm. what makes you sense the pleasure? It's dopamine. It's dopamine. It has, yeah, there must be a gash of dopamine. It's, it sounds brain. like an airway <laughs> word. Do, <laughs> dop <laughs> dopamine. <laughs> Powerful. Yeah, so um, sometimes we manage people because they have low dopamine levels. Okay. You know, you know, you give them the appropriate treatments. Mm. They, are, they are back to themselves. Mm. The other neurotransmitters like serotonin, no adrenaline. They, serotonin, they adrenaline. <laughs> I see. Adrenaline rings a bell. Yes, yeah, that's what gives you energy to and run, drive in life, run and for the sense danger and, and that yes. kind of thing. Wow, this is interesting. We'll come back to the vein diagram. So yeah. let's talk about what do you need to do to enjoy good mental health. So if yeah, what what are some of the things a person needs to do to enjoy good mental health? Yeah, so um, I'll still go back to the three components. So so psychological, you need to be able to have good relationship. You need to be able to have. Um, good coping skills, uh, you need to be able to have good hobbies, um, and then socially you need to be able to interact well with people, and then you also need to know yourself. You need mm. to know what your strengths and what your, your weaknesses are. You shy away from your weaknesses and emphasize your strength, and mm -hmm. um, if you do that, that should be able to make you enjoy you know, a very good mental health. And I said in the initially that you know, we pretend that mental health does not exist, and that's the reason some people even don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the fact that mental health is crucial, it's important, you know, it forms a significant aspect of your life, then you begin to recognize it, you know, and then where possible you enjoy. If there are deficits, you correct them. Interesting. This is the Effective Living Series, and we are in our second week. Our focus for the week is emotional and mental health imperatives for 2023. Our focus for today is mental health. My guest is Dr. Delali Fiagbe. He is the head of the department for psychiatry, University of Ghana Medical School. He also does a private practice. And he's told us already that uh, there are psychological, social, and biological dimensions of mental health. Mental health is very important for effective living as well. Now, you're saying, how do you enjoy good mental health? Know yourself. But that has, that's very broad, because what about if I'm an, a teenager? What if I'm a, a, a young child? Typically, people become aware of themselves the older they get, all right? So you already said that there's even pre-neonatal uh, fetal distress, fetal distress <laughs> right? So at, at what point does a person begin to know themselves? Because if you have a patient who's 40 years old, he can tell you that in my first 30 years, I used to follow guys who smoke weed or something. But if I'm nine years old and I am depressed, how am I able to know myself that if I come to you, you can help me? Yeah, I mean, that, that is um, challenging for maybe the unaided eye, but with, with some training, we're able to pick up children who, have, who are depressed, 
we're able to pick up children who have conduct disorders. Mm -hmm. So for now, it's going to be by proxy. The parents have to be aware. I think that's why we are championing this course, that mm -hmm. children have mental health issues. For example, if it's not for any reason that a child would decide not to go to school. There are particular reasons. You know, a child who is not eating, there are reasons why they are not eating. A child who is not sleeping, there are reasons why they are not sleeping. So if that comes to the fore and you draw attention, there are ways of working around it, you know, to pinpoint exactly what is wrong with the child. So again, let's go to dopamine again. There are some children who have low dopamine. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have low dopamine, what happens is that it's difficult for you to control your edges, you know, it's difficult for you to control your actions. So you can have this child who is running around every time, you know, they touch this thing, they pull this thing down. We call them attention deficit hyperactivity syndrome. The main reason is that they have low dopamine at a certain part of the brain. So if you find out and you think that this child is just a stubborn child, <laughs> you've heard right okay. from the word go. Mm. So you, you can ask us to see, you know, we we'll evaluate them and see if there's a, a need for us to give medication, we give, if there's not a need to give medication. And there are some other psychosocial components that can mm. be modified around the house, mm. in school, in church, that can help the, the mm. child to cope. You know, we deploy those systems and usually it works out for them. Mm. So for children, um, they might not be able to say. Sometimes we ask them to draw. So for example, some of the um, children who have been raped, the way we find out is ask them to draw. Mm. And to amaze you, they'll draw the act. Mm. It's surprising how they, they're able to do that. It's imprinted will, on their mind. It's, it's imprinted on their mind and they're able to put that across in drawing. So As against say, saying it verbally. Exactly. Sometimes you ask them to play. So we just study them, how they are playing with their colleagues. You know, there are some um, some, there are some children who have that deficit. They are not able to interact well. In autism disorder, they, they have difficulty interacting with people. They have a very close world, so they, they don't invite people in. You change the routines and they're all over the place. So during their play, we're able to tell that oh, this patient has maybe an autistic, uh, autistic spectrum disorder or something. And there are treatments for such, such people. Mm. You are mentioning many things. ADHD, something, <laughs> autistic. So maybe let me put it this way. Uh, two things. Some people say we are all we all have mental health problems. So <laughs> I could come from that angle. Some people to say is there anything like a normal person. So maybe let me frame the question differently. Do we all have mental health challenges? We all have mental health. Some people have the disorder. Okay. So we so all have mental health challenges, but some have a disorder. Yes, everybody has a challenge of a sort. I mean, um, so you lose somebody, you have a challenge. Um, your child doesn't make a mark in, in class. They have a challenge. So that's, that's how, it's, like I indicated earlier, it's how you interpret things, how you think about things and process information. So there's that challenge that you have to, you know, face. But some people, when it gets beyond a certain threshold, then we can define that as a disorder because beyond that threshold, it affects your interpersonal relationship with people. It affects your work. You know, be productive at work. You come to work and sit and just stare at, at people. So when it, when it crosses that threshold, then it becomes a disorder. But otherwise, there are challenges within decent, you know, limits of normality that we I accept. See. What are the commonest mental health disorders that you have seen in your practice or through research in um, Ghana? In, in Ghana. In Ghana. So um, we look at them. We look at them as mood disorders. Mm -hmm. We look at them as thought disorders and there may be substance, okay. substance use disorders. So these are like the... Mood, thought, substance use. Yes, these are like the brother. And then the children also have their barrage of disorders that we, we look at. But generally, we look at them. So under the mood, um, so I give the example of if you pass an exam, mm -hmm. you can be so excited. You have like eight A's, which you didn't expect. That Dali. night, you'll not be able to sleep. You know, you might drink your head off mm -hmm. and all that. So um, if that goes on two days, three days, four days, five days, you are not sleeping then you are moving into another area of, of, of from a challenge to a disorder. Because <laughs> <Disorder. laughs> you're not sleeping. If you don't sleep for five days, it will impair your reasoning process and all that. So that's, those are like how your feeling can lead you into a disorder. In the same way, if let's say you, the, the result is flashed and you are, you've had all Fs, you know, you feel down. We're expecting you to feel down. It's normal, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. But if you continue, <laughs> if you continue beyond that, you can't wake up, up out of bed, you can't eat, you've mm. lost appetite, mm. then we think that there's a problem. Mm. So that usually that's how we do the, our formulation. We, okay. we look at whether this particular 
um, issue is affecting the individual's lifestyle mm. in all the various dimensions that I've mentioned. That's how we, we work around it. Mm. So there's um, the mood disorders, and then you have explained two aspects of that. Aspect of it. But yeah. you don't want to name the disorder. Oh, well, I, I, I could name Give them. me like a couple of mood disorders. Mood disorders. So there's a bipolar affective disorder. Bipolar affecting disorder. Um, even though there are several subtypes. Dimensions of There are dimensions of that <laughs> one. <Lord. but laughs> and then which other one under mood? Under mood, we have the depression. Depression? Yes. So depression that appears disorder. fairly common. Yes, depression Or people is, use it. People yeah, use it generally, but generally, it's not, it yes, may not be. Usually, if, when you are sad, they say you are depressed, but it's really... So depression is a specific condition? Yes. Once you mention depression to a clinician, it means it's a disorder. And uh, it must fulfill a certain criteria before you say you, you are depressed. So for example, if you have a low mood, which should have lasted beyond two weeks. That occurs usually in the mornings and lasts throughout the day. You should have fatigue, you get tired as a least exertion. You, you are, you are, there's no energy drive to do anything in the morning. And these patterns will go ahead and affect when and how you get up and go to work, productivity at work, it will affect your relationship with people. So, you, I mean, you can see the intensity. So that is what qualifies that as a, a disorder. So depression for us is a disorder. Otherwise, anything else, you are feeling sad. You're feeling sad. Yes. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. So there's bipolar, which have many spectrums. There's depression. So those are the two main mood those disorders. Those are the two main mood disorders. And I talk about thought disorders yeah so thought disorders is usually how people perceive the world mm -hmm. okay so um we perceive the world through our senses uh -huh. so touch um taste vision you know um smell because that's that's how we perceive the world and um what we perceive should be in relation to what others feel so for example i'm sitting in this chair and um I feel a sensation that makes me get up, okay? And that goes on for a very long time. Each time I sit in this chair, I have to get up because there's something that, you know, and somebody else comes to sit in this chair, the person is feeling fine. Much, okay. Then we think that there's some problem with how you process that, that, that information. So okay. for example, you can also hear stuff mm -hmm. that nobody is hearing. You're the only person here, and that is affecting, you know, how you see things, how you behave. Uh, I know it's getting a little complicated. But no, I'm, I'm following you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, once so the way you process the thing mentally is abnormal or yeah. is irregular, you are exactly. possibly looking at thought disorders. Yeah, you are looking at yeah, thought disorders. Which means that all of us have decided that this chair is normal for sitting. sitting. But if you think the chair is for something else, then the problem is an issue. For a very long time. For a very long it time. starts affecting, you know, each time you enter this room, you don't want to sit the chair, you are not working because that's affecting you. Then we think that there might be a problem. So that's a thought. But what names do you give to these thought disorders? Oh, so we have delusional disorders. Delusional disorders. <laughs> so this is not just English, like, oh, you are no, deluded. No. Oh, yeah. So if you tell me you are deluded, for me, it's a different matter. But delusional disorders are specific. They do, they are specific. Okay. I.e. perceiving things that are not real? Is that what delusion yes, is? Yes, perceiving things or believing things which are not real. That's the delusional disorder. Yeah. Which other ones are there under the thought ones? Okay, so there's also schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. That's fairly common. Schizo means two? Or, or um, schizo, schizo means uh, split. Phrenia split. is mind. So split mind. So it's like, it's, it's not from bipolar. It's different from bipolar. Yeah, it's different from bipolar. Bipolar, you cycle between like excited and manic states, and then in the next phase, you are so, so depressed. So you are cycling between the two. So it's the same person with two different spectrums of behavior. Of but mood. Of mood. Yes. But schizophrenia is... The thought process. So you are believing unusual things. You may actually be hearing things that nobody is hearing, and that goes on for a very long time. This is the effective living series. Today's topic is understanding mental health. This is just the basics. So it's basically mental health 101. HOD <laughs> for UGMS psychiatry. Just giving us the, a basic walkthrough. I'm sure Breakfast Daily will invite him later on to do more deep dive into the subject. But Dr. Dali Fiagbe has been really exciting with us so far. Mood disorders is mentioned too. There are, there are a few more. Thought disorders is mentioned. Delusional disorders, schizophrenia. So let's get into substance abuse, just to be proportional in the discussion. Exactly. So you've, uh, substance use disorders, what do you mean by that? Um, so I think I mentioned earlier on that dopamine is what gives jive to life and the So there are some people for some reason have low levels. And some of these 
substances like cocaine, alcohol, weed or cannabis have a way of playing around our dopamine levels in the brain. Um, if you take it once and you have the excitement that you get off it, that's not really a problem. I mean, it only become a disorder where you have impaired control. It's difficult for you to stop when you want to stop. And again, it's at the beginning to affect other areas of your life. You know, it's glaring that it's affecting your liver, it's affecting your kidney, and you don't give a damn, you keep mm -hmm. going. So there's impaired control of that use. Mm -hmm. That is where it becomes the disorder. But mm -hmm. otherwise, if you're a social drinker, um, you visit the pub and take a thought or so, that's, we don't consider that you know, a disorder. So when the thing begins to affect other dimensions of your life, mm -hmm. then we think that there's a problem. And that's when it becomes a disorder. And the, so the persistent use of these things, beyond the fact that you can't control their use and you can't stop, can it lead to uh, group A mood or group B thought? Yeah, for if there's a predisposition, if there's a genetic predisposition, um, definitely these are like precursors that will move you faster into those. Into those. But if there's not, it apart doesn't from cannabis, lead. cannabis we know most research has shown that it's, it hastens schizophrenia. Or cannabis most of hastens thoughts, schizophrenia? Yes, most of the thought disorders. But again, it's not for everybody. Okay. Mean, if there's a predisposition, then you can. So that's but if, if you smoke if you smoke weed, it can lead to the schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> that's the oh, is there anything in coded English? <laughs> uh, oh, is that what you are supposed to say? If you smoke, is that that's cannabis is weed, right? Oh yes, cannabis is weed. Or marijuana. Marijuana. Or some type. And and controlled use of it can lead to schizophrenia. Yes. Sometimes. Yes, if you're exposed to it, you can. I see. It can lead to. All right, let's come to stress. You use an interesting word. You said. The fetus is distressed. And I didn't even think about stress in that sense. And die is two. So double stress. Double but stress. let's talk about stress generally. Because in this modern world lifestyle, it's a lot of work-related stress, yeah. which I believe also can affect mental health. Just talk to me about that. Yeah. So again, to backtrack to the three dimensions of mental health, the mm -hmm. bio, psychological, and social mm -hmm. interplaying, one of the enzymes that will make you manifest a genetic disorder is stress. Mm. So um, it's crucial for us to know about it. And stress is basically getting to the point where um, your body is telling you, literally, I can't, I can't go on mm. because there's so much pressure. Mm. And you don't have the resources to be able to handle you know, the, the pressure. Um, it's not all that gloomy. Pressure, um, stress is good to a certain threshold where it becomes you know, inimical to you. So maybe before coming for this, I had a little bit of stress, you know, it was making me read around, making sure I gather my thoughts properly for the discussion. That you need that adrenaline to be able to do that. But if stress goes on and there's no escape routes, then of course it becomes dangerous and that will lead you into what we call you being burnt out, okay? So generally, this is what, you know, stress is, you know. It are, there are various reasons why it could have stress and there are various manifestations. Mm -hmm. um, right from what you eat can give you stress. Mm -hmm. Your interactions with people, your wife, your kids can give you stress. Your work can give you stress. Um, and even your spiritual life sometimes can give you stress. If you have to be going to all night back to back, it can give you some level of stress. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so basically, I think that's... So how do you manage stress? Um, the management of stress is diverse. It mm -hmm. depends on the individual. I mentioned earlier that we, we always do a coping skill analysis. You should know what works for you. Mm -hmm. There is no straight jacket for anybody when it comes to dealing with stress. But basically, we think that if you know yourself very well, you know what works for you. Um, God has worked that into every individual to be able to regulate their stress. Um, the, only, the only thing is that we don't take mental health that seriously. So. You know, it's happening, but we don't know it's working. Mm. If you're having a good sleep, that's a way of dealing with, with, with stress. You're expected to have like seven to eight hours of sleep. Um, if there's a deficit because of work, you always make up for it. So the body itself has been able to, has that arrangement to deal, to deal with stress. Um, I mentioned food. So there are some foods which are very good, you know, when you, when, and the eating process itself, 
releases dopamine and dopamine and some other neurotransmitters in the brain. So eating is distressing? Oh, yes. You heard that first here. <laughs> so Charlie, when you get your cake, take your time and deal with it. Exactly. The, the process of eating is distressing. distressing. Yes. My Lord. But when you eat um, a lot, what if you eat too much? Of course. <laughs> It must be within a certain limit. So once you go beyond that, it can become also mm -hmm. stressful. Once you start putting on weight, you Excessive. look at yourself in the mirror and you don't like yourself, that becomes another source of stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but I mean, taking time to eat and eating properly is distressing for a lot of people. Some people, when they are eating, this is the time they, you know, make the course. I mean, it's part of life in a way, but for them, that should not be a distressing process. You know, you can go with the family somewhere <coughs> to go and have a meal together. Mm -hmm. That process is distressing to the body, mm -hmm. yeah. And the religion, religion is it has, it's it's diverse. It's both ways. You mm -hmm. know, you can have religion being a stressor at the same time a de-stressor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if there are some scriptures that you can quote to yourself that could help you, for example, the Bible says that David encouraged himself mm -hmm. in the Lord. So that's that's something that you can use when you're feeling down and you're feeling or stressed. music, exactly. So music. Um, some people lock memories in music. So each time the music. It, Play, it evokes those good memories and that also helps. There's also imagery that we sometimes use. Try to imagine beautiful places in life, you know, things that you've done before. You think down, you sit down and just reflect on them. And by so doing, it's a very uh, potent way of uh, mm. de-stressing yourself. Um, there are bad ways of relieving stress, substances. Some people use it, mm. but um, in the long run, it doesn't really help because it it's, it's creates a lot of substance use problem for them. But otherwise, some people take a drink as a way of relaxing over the weekend. Mm. Um, it's okay. I mean, you can mm. you can do that. Yeah. But if you are taking like hard substances to do that, then we 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 kind of counsel against okay. that. So you've piqued our interest in the subject, and I'm sure people want to hear more from you. How can they get in touch with you, just to do a normal conversation? Because I feel a lot of families may want to even go for a general checkup to see if they are okay. How can they get in touch with you? Um, so I'm in the Department of Psychiatry, um, Kolebu Teaching Hospital, University of Ghana. It's a bit confusing. It's the University of Ghana and Kolebu share the same space. So we have a department um, available there. And they're usually in the afternoons and the evenings, I run the private practice. So um, you can get in touch with me. Mm. I'm sure my number might be put up. We'll put on soon. the screen. Fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Delali Fiaba. We used to call him Sela. <laughs> when we were in the university, he's the main guy, Sela. Champion keyboardist. <laughs> now he's the head of department UGMS. Hope you've learned something. This was basically an introduction to mental health. We want to make it a more regular conversation, not just on Breakfast Daily, but also on the Breakfast Show. So I'm sure you'll be hearing more from him and others as we demystify mental health. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Effective Living Series. We'll be with you next time. Bye-bye.